Oh, hey, I've seen this video. Actually, this is sort of a video response and uh, explanation of the physics involved in this video. So even if you have seen it, um, enjoy my interpretation of um, exactly what's going on. I'm sure that just about everybody on YouTube has seen this video or a similar video at some time or another. We have this brass disc, which is obviously a magnet, and it seems to be levitating above this dark gray kind of block, um, which is not a magnet. Now, the reason I'm making this kind of response video is because I watch that video quite often, and it seems like nobody in the comments has the slightest clue what they're talking about. This is a phenomenon called superconductivity, and although most people don't know anything about it, I know a fair bit about it. I'm not a physicist, so feel free to correct me on any mistakes I make. Um, let me explain this whole thing to you. I'm sure everybody knows at least a little bit about resistance in electrical wires. Inside an electrical wire, it's not perfect. There's a lot of imperfections. And as electrical current flows through it, it might not be able to flow as perfectly as it would under ideal conditions. Um, what happens as a result is that we lose electrical energy and it makes heat. You might notice that if you touch a wire, sometimes it feels warm or even hot. And basically that's just because of resistance. All electrical wires have resistance. We as human beings cannot make an electrical wire that's perfect enough that there's no resistance in it. In the year of 1911, there was a Dutch physicist who was studying refrigeration. And he did an experiment in which he took a wire and passed an electrical current through it at different temperatures. He noticed that as he decreased the temperature of the wire, the resistance offered by the wire also decreased. So like any good scientist, he started graphing his results. The resistance in the wire decreased quite slowly compared to the temperature, and as he did more and more trials, this graph started appearing quite linear. Then to his shock, at a certain temperature, the resistance in the wire plummeted to zero. Now it's important to note that as of yet we haven't found any materials that can become superconductors outside of these extremely cold conditions. Usually we're talking about well below negative 200 degrees Celsius. That's about negative 330 in Fahrenheit. So unless it's an exceptionally cold day on the dark side of the moon, you're going to need something to actually cool down your material past its critical temperature to make it into a superconductor. That's what the can of liquid is at the beginning of the video. Most likely liquid nitrogen just poured over the material in order to make it into a superconductor. Without the liquid nitrogen to cool it down, what would be our superconductor would probably have no interesting properties at all. So what does all this have to do with magnets? Well, I'm sure most people know that electricity and magnetism are very closely related, and superconductivity is no exception. Well, this is where superconductivity starts to get interesting. Superconductors hate magnetic fields. Now a magnetic field will pass through just about anything. In fact, it's not much easier to block a magnetic field than it is to block gravity. A magnetic field will pass right through a piece of paper, it'll pass through plastic. A magnetic field will pass right through your hands and still be strong on the other side. But a magnetic field will not pass through a superconductor. This is known as the Meissner effect. A superconductor will reflect a magnetic field back at itself just like a mirror. It is impervious to magnetic fields. That's why our little brass friend is levitating. Everybody knows that the two of the same magnetic pole will repel each other. That's exactly what's happening here. The magnet's magnetic field is bouncing off the superconductor and repelling itself. So if the magnetic forces are repulsive, why is the magnet so stable? And why doesn't it just fly off? Well, there are actually attractive forces at work in conjunction with the repulsive forces but I must admit that goes over my head a little bit. Hopefully this simplified explanation of the Meissner effect and superconductivity will keep you content for now. I hope you enjoyed this video half as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have any questions about this video or suggestions for new ones please let me know. Also it'll help me out if you comment and rate on this video.